What's up everyone out there in YouTube land? Comic Quarter 410 here to do my entry video for Spidey Fan 78 CT's 100 subscriber contest. And um, obviously, if you haven't checked his channel out, go check his channel out. Has a lot of great books. Um, well deserved. He got to 100 subs pretty quick, but it's well deserved. Please check his channel out. And uh, of course, Spidey Fan, congratulations. Uh, congratulations are due on the subs. You deserve it. Great channel. Uh, very generous contest with some great books, so please check him out. Um, his video said, show your favorite covers from each era. And, <clears throat> excuse me, you're asking for trouble with me. Uh, I had to cut myself off. I admittedly went with what I could access a little more easier. But, you know, there's tons of more covers I could have picked. Uh, you know, I didn't even pick a Brian Bolin or Art Adams cover or Jeff Darrow cover and, you know, or Richard Corbin. And, you know, there are many of my favorites. But, um, you know, and I can think of a few I'd pick. And, you know, series like Conan and Savage Sword of Conan, I could do a whole video and probably pick out 50 or 100 covers I love, you know, from those series. So um, just just pulled out a few of my favorites. And uh, I'm going to start with Golden Age. And... As everyone knows, I'm a huge EC fan, and um, this copy's a little rough, but this is my copy of Tales from the Crypt 32, and this is one of the two band covers from Tales from the Crypt. This is a Jack Davis cover, and I just love this cover, and I should know, should know the name. There's a nickname for this cover, like Dead Meat or something. I forget. I forget. It'll come to me as soon as the video's over. I know how, how that works. Uh, this is another one of my favorites. This is Tales from the Crypt 37. Another awesome Jack Davis cover. And uh, as far as Golden Age artists, nobody could draw a zombie like Jack Davis. And another one of my favorite artists, Bernie Wrightson. You can tell this cover was a huge influence on Bernie Wrightson's style. Love that cover. Um... Another Jack Davis cover from Tales from the Crypt, and this might be my favorite Tales from the Crypt cover overall. And this is issue number 40, and this is a pretty bright, sharp copy. It has a few problems on the spine, but um, again, another zombie. Uh, skin Diver is finding a zombie inside of a clamshell. Just a epic cover. I love the, love the layout and the use of color in this. And the fish have a cartoony look to them, but somehow it doesn't really detract too much from the piece in my opinion. Love that cover. More EC. This is probably this is one of my two favorite um, e EC sci-fi covers and this is in rough shape. I've showed it before. It has a problem over there on the end and a big chip miss on the bottom. But this is a legendary Wally Wood cover to Weird Science Fantasy 16 of um, these Martian, these these aliens that were the prototype for many, you know, Mars attacks, the aliens on the Simpsons, so many things that came after um, this issue used this as a visual model uh, of their aliens. Beautifully done. Love the kids hiding behind the rocks, seeing what's going on. It's great stuff by the master, Wallywood. Um, here we have another Wally Wood cover. Again, not in the best shape. Weird, weird Science Fantasy 19. This is a zombie outside the airlock. Sorry about the glare. He did a pretty good zombie too. Great stuff. And this is one of the only cover I have by one of my favorite artists. And that's, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I have some more recent stuff that he did, but my only golden age um cover that i have by frank frazetta and this is weird science fantasy 29 it's actually a pretty nice copy i'd give this me like a very fine very fine minus but uh very nice very happy to have this book it's the only cover frazetta did for weird science fantasy and it's a very well-known cover it was originally a buck rogers piece that they altered to make it this cover and it's just a beauty his line work his detail he is incredible. That's one of my favorite covers that I own. All right. Sorry I have so many here, but uh, couldn't leave Steve Ditko out. I've showed this book many times. My favorite issue of Amazing Spider-Man 
issue number 33. Just when, when I know what's behind this cover, the story that's behind Spidey under all this wreckage and the water is coming in. I just, this, this cover just means so much to my childhood and I love it. Still, the storytelling in that issue still holds up. This copy is also rough, but just one of Jim Stranko's most legendary covers. And he didn't do too much work on the Hulk. This might even be the only cover he did, but this is a uh, King Size Hulk number one. And just epic cover there by Stranko. This has been. This has been ripped and homaged so many times by other artists, and uh, rightfully so. Stranko is one of the true masters of layouts. And, like, you know, I could probably pick out four or five of his covers, but I'm missing some of them, like the uh, the Nick Fury number one and number four that Hippie and, and Steve have. They're, you know, some of the most well-known covers in existence. Uh, like what I said about Conan, I could probably pick out 50 or 100 Conan books, especially with uh, Savage Sword, but this is probably my favorite uh, cover of the regular Conan the Barbarian series, and this is the cover to King Size Annual Number 1 by Barry Smith, and I've showed this before, but I just love it. His detail on this cover is just incredible. Love this cover. It's a beauty. Excellent stuff by a master. And I mentioned Bernie Wrightson before. I'm a big Swamp Thing fan, so you know I have to have to show this. This is Swamp Thing number one. And um, as Hippie pointed out, the girl in this uh, was modeled after Louise Simonson. So, very well-known Bernie Wrightson cover. And this is probably my favorite Bernie Wrightson cover. Definitely one of them of his Swamp Thing run. And this is issue number five. Where he's just fighting the angry villagers with torches and pitchforks and awesome stuff. By the master of horror. And uh, I wanted to show this. I couldn't find my Swamp Thing 22. That's another one of my favorite covers that Nestor Redondo did. But Nestor took over after uh, Bernie Wrightson on Swamp Thing, which was no small task. And I think he's highly underrated and I really like his covers. And I wanted to show this cover to Swamp Thing 13 by Nestor Redondo. Because he did an awesome job following up Wrightson. He really did some beautiful covers. Love that one. Um, moving along, this is another book I've showed a few times, but this is definitely my favorite Neil Adams Bruce Lee piece and one of my favorite Neil Adams covers in general, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu number 14, the tribute to Bruce Lee after he died. Big, 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 big Bruce Lee fan. Um, again, showed this, and I've talked about this. I'm, I'm a big G.I. Joe fan, and... um. To me, the two masters of the Marvel G.I. Joe covers were Michael Golden, even though he didn't do as many as some of the other artists, and Mike Zack. So, this is G.I. Joe yearbook number one, and as, you know, as uh, Steve Fullkiller pointed out, this cover really, you know, it, it did a good job of bridging the gap artistically and visually between the toy line, the comic book series, and the cartoons. So everything was you know, cor you know, um, correct to the, the visual design of the toy line and the costumes of the, the figures, but it also, his style really kind of almost looked like the Sunbow cartoon. And, you know, as a kid of the eighties, the, they hit you with the toys, the comics and the cartoons and, and you couldn't help but like them. So great stuff. G.I. Joe yearbook number one. Another Michael Golden cover. This is G.I. Joe number 43 with, um, you know, I don't even know who this skeleton warrior is, but that's just an awesome cover. You're like, what's going on? It's just like death coming. I mentioned Mike Zeck. This is uh, one of my favorite G.I. Joe covers he did, number 39 with uh, Stalker. I'm not sure who that is with him. Is it Grunt? But they're in the, uh, they're in the, Brush in their camo. Awesome cover by Mike Zeck. And I also love his covers on uh, on the Punisher Mini, as, as uh, Full Killer pointed out. They're excellent. I should have grabbed one of those. But I also love his covers on um, Spider-Man Craven's Last Hunt. They're just epic. Um, Modern Age. This is a cover I just pulled out because it's often overlooked. And um, it's one of my favorite modern John Romita Jr. covers because uh, Richard Eisenhove digitally colored this and I think he did a beautiful job. It's uh Wolverine number twenty four. 
with him and Daredevil on the cover. Really like that one. Um, really love this, and uh, it's a shame Kyle Baker doesn't want to do comic work much anymore, but he he's happier doing commercial work and in cartoons and stuff, so more power to him, but man, this cover, I got this book when I was young, got it for Christmas, and uh, right away this cover just like hit me, and uh, gorgeous Kyle Baker cover of the Joker, and I love how the design of his suit is almost like looks like cut and pasted from another alley like he just almost left the suit blank and then just put this pattern of the pinstriping on it the face the smile the smoking gun just the feet of the dead body love that painted piece great cover um and like i said there's i left out some artists but I, i'm sorry i've already shown a lot of books here so i apologize for that but had to have a George Perez book and love so many of his Teen Titans covers and you know he's done so much great work but I really this was a staple of my childhood love this story and this cover to number one is just beautiful really love this, this is Infinity Gauntlet number one by George Perez just a beauty and I love how the uh you know the sparkles the lines of uh illumination coming off the gems almost like divide up the pictures that the character is almost like the borders beautiful design um michael turner some great work and uh we lost him way too early and this is one of my favorite covers he did this is the variant to world war world war hulk number one all the marvel heroes there in the background Hulk raging with the earth and the sun coming up over the horizon of the earth. Beautiful Aspen cover by the great Michael Turner. And last but not least, another great Michael Turner. This is the variant to Uncanny X-Men 500. One of the last pieces he did. And just an epic, epic cover of our X-Men. So... Um, sorry I showed so many books. Thank you all for taking the time to check them out. Again, congratulations go out to SpideyFan78CT on the subs. Uh, thank you for the generosity in doing this contest. And uh, sorry I put so many books in, but I just, I'm a fanboy for the covers, man. So thank you all again, and uh, take care of each other and your families, and enjoy your comic book reading.